actually taking bits and pieces from what our speakers did and not putting them in the order in which the presentations came, because I think ideas came from different uh, sources and different times. So what I try to do is pull it together uh, in a somewhat coherent fashion. Now, talking about where our relationship has gotten to today, um, I think Ambassador Moss started us off with this. Really, the pivotal point was probably uh, the demise of the Cold War, the end of the Cold War. For it, it had many international ramifications, but as we started our discussion here, one of the things that we did notice is that the end of the Cold War precipitated also a change in the relationship between North America and Latin America. Number one, something that came out in a, in a number of our presentations today. What that did in turn is open up a flood of bilateral trade agreements. The problem is that bilateral trade agreements have not led to any kind of a cohesive framework. The logic of going beyond bilateral is compelling. The data that we saw, if we do a broader trade agreement, multiple countries will lead to tremendous economic benefits for all parties concerned. Now, let's take a look at uh, Latin America. We continually were reminded today that Latin America is not a single region. We cannot talk about necessarily Latin America and say one thing that will apply generally across all the countries. That's difficult to do. And, however, uh, one thing that I, I pulled out from a presentation was this. Two parallel changes possibly are going on in Latin America. Um, we, we talked about uh, the commodity boom. And what we're beginning to see in some parts of Latin America, um, Venezuela, Bolivia, we can name other countries as well, is that the commodity boom has led to an exploitation of natural resources in these countries. It's, it's fueled economic growth, but there is uh, local cost to pay for that as well. We do see that the countries that generally have moved in that trajectory will probably be facing some transitional moments at this point because of some of the backlash that it has generated. Uh, the second point that came out is that there is another group of countries in Latin America, lumping them widely and broadly, but like Costa Rica, Chile, Uruguay, and so forth, are a little bit more perhaps open to overtures from North America to do a broader possible trade agreement with that. The problem that we're suffering from right now is bad politics, to be quite honest. We see Canada moving toward the European Union. We see Latin America, we spoke about it, but not in great depth, also doing a lot more with the European Union. And significantly, we also see the United States now going toward the European Union. What we're not doing is talking among ourselves. We're talking outside. While the economic case is compelling that we should be talking across our hemispheres, we're not. Why? bad politics at this moment. One of the things that uh, came across is this. We need an incentive to begin that dialogue. Uh, Professor Brooks pointed to the book about uh, China. Possibly that's it. Take a look at the European Union. Why did the European Union succeed? Well, what people don't find out enough is it grew in leaps at certain moments. They leverage a crisis, use that crisis to move forward. The European Economic Community was created after the Suez Crisis. Uh, in the 1970s, we had the oil crisis that led to the single market in Europe. The 1990s, we had the Cold War ending, and we ended up with the Maastricht Treaty. So Europe has successfully leveraged these incentives to do more. What we are missing, I think, is that incentive. So, number one is this. How do we create the incentive to talk between North America and Latin America? Do we have to wait for a crisis? The second thing that came up 
Another avenue by which we could probably move more significantly in this direction um, was on our last panel talking about investment. Uh, I'm going to steal from a person who was at one of our conferences two years ago, Dan Hamilton. And what he continually points out is that if you look at the trade flows between uh, the United States and the European Union, they're healthy. But really what the glue is between us, as our trade diverts, you keep saying trade is mercurial, you go to the best deal, investment is totally different. Investment is the bond between the European Union and the United States. Why isn't our investment moving elsewhere? Uh, one statistic. There is more European Union investment in the state of Texas than all of U.S. investment in China and Japan combined. Why is investment not flowing to China and, and so much? It's because the risk that you have to take in your investment. <coughs> However, what led the European Union to its big step is once they started their trade uh, reduction in tariffs and so forth, they then moved into what they call the single market, where regulations were reduced, and that's when the European Union began to really take off. It was 1987. That's when we get the Maastricht Treaty. And that's when we begin to see. So a parallel track that we talked about a little bit today, that we really need to explore more to provide that incentive, is investment. Because one thing you do in investment that you don't do in trade, is you buy a piece of stake of society in the other country. The deeper our investment, the greater that connection. And that was one of the things that came out of the data here. So, in conclusion then, I think we have an opportunity. We can see the compelling logic of it. We have to get over our bad politics. We see a couple of avenues by which it can be done. Now what we have to come up with are the strategies to do that. Well, that's my summation. Um, many rebuttals will come, I'm sure. Uh, we will, next year, do another event. Building on this one, adding another region, so that within a couple of years we will have, hopefully, a global framework. That is our long-term goal. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody and, and wish you uh, safe travels wherever everyone is going.